This is a video preview of the KJV Rock of Ages Study Bible, Goat Skin Edition. The KJV Rock of Ages Study Bible offers an unparalleled selection of helps designed to encourage the study of God's unchanging Word. The Rock of Ages Study Bible is a revision of the New Pilgrim Bible, which was an updated and enhanced edition of the original work that was first released in 1948. The purpose of the Rock of Ages Study Bible is to aid your study and understanding of God's Word and to open up and demonstrate a clear picture of the holiness, the justice, the mercy, the love, and the grace of God to sinful men and women through God's Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. If you are looking for a truly fundamental King James Study Bible, you found it. As the title page states, the Rock of Ages Study Bible has study notes you can trust. With book introductions, in text notes, bottom of page notes, in text charts, and in text maps. A large print size 10 font and a premium goatskin leather binding. This luxurious premium edge-lined Rock of Ages study Bible features a rare goatskin leather binding on the outside with calfskin leather lining on the inside. It is exceptionally well crafted from one of the highest quality leathers available and its edge-lined binding with superior flexibility is made to last and withstand heavy usage. The combination of lined the edge style and Smith's sewn pages provides extreme flexibility and means this Bible will lay flat when open on a desk or pulpit and will easily fold and bend in the hands. This limited Rock of Ages edition also features four ribbon markers and a presentation box. The roots of the KJV Rock of Ages Study Bible and New Pilgrim Bible stretch back nearly 75 years. Now, this edge-line goatskin edition, the utmost quality Rock of Ages Bible ever assembled in that period, is available for those who appreciate premium leather in its finest form. As we take a closer look at the packaging of the KJV Rock of Ages Study Bible Goat Skin Edition, we're seeing this gold Rock of Ages gift box that's pictured here. Um, some of them may also come with our regular KJV store colored maroon or burgundy gift box, but um, that'll of course protect it in transit and makes it nice for gift giving. Then we look at the physical Bible itself, and we're gonna of course always notice the raised hubs on the spine. Uh, and these are really beautiful. Again, it's a sign of vintage quality um, kind of more of an antique look, and they're not quite as pronounced as some Bibles, but it's still very nice and gives it an elevated look. And you see Holy Bible, Rock of Ages Study Bible, KJV, and then the Rock of Ages uh, logo there at the bottom. These Bibles are also printed and bound in the USA, and we're getting a closer look at this luxurious, ultra-soft goatskin leather cover. It's a really beautiful grain of goatskin. You can really see the definition and detail of that cover, especially when you see some of the bends and things there in the light. And if you were to lightly run your finger across uh, this Bible, you would feel just how soft it truly is. Uh, it's really as soft as any leather Bible I've ever held. And compared to the price of most other more expensive goatskin leather Bibles, this Rock of Ages study Bible is a tremendous value. And we want to demonstrate that the quality of this goatskin leather Bible not only extends from the outside, but it's also on the interior features. And as we've seen, uh, this Bible lays completely flat, brand new out of the box. Here we are in Proverbs. Um, that's essentially close to the middle of the Bible, Psalms and Proverbs area. And you see that it can completely fold in half, even when it's open. And we always say, definitely do not try that with a cheaply made Bible. Uh, it won't work. You might break the spine of it. Um, and it's, again, it just has amazing flexibility um, and it's going to give you a comfortable reading experience. It has amazing flexibility. It literally rolls up like a tortilla, as we would say here in Texas. We're a Texas-based company. You can see the rolls. It's completely unstressed, that goat skin on the outside. And then we know also that the, in, the edge line style means that this is 
calfskin leather on the inside. Um, we're essentially looking there that typically most of these are going to be an imitation leather or a piece of end paper. So the fact that this is truly genuine calfskin leather line is yet another step up in quality. And we always like to show here that this calfskin on the left it is going to meet up here with this end paper reinforcement. And we show these two pages right here, these are absolutely stuck together on purpose. Uh, you don't want to pull those apart. That's done to reinforce the quality of the binding. Uh, but again, you're seeing the idea of the flexibility here uh, with a true calfskin genuine leather lining as opposed to just an imitation leather lining. That's an extra degree of quality that you don't see even on most edge lined Bibles. Also a part of this edge line style goatskin leather edition with calfskin leather lining is this sewn edging and perimeter stitching that you're seeing all the way out down the outside cover of this Bible. And then of course, as we see on the inside flap, it continues there. You can see that stitching and that the genuine calfskin leather is tucked under the outside flap of goatskin leather and sewn together. Again, you know, these are bound by hand, uh, made with quality and care uh, in making this copy of the Word of God. The title page of the Bible is a good place to check and see evidence of the Smith sewn binding. If we pick it up and lift here, the thread is very small, but you can see there the evidence, the holes. That is the thread that is appearing in this Bible. Those Smithstone pages are adding even more flexibility and durability to this Bible. And again, per perimeter stitching on the outside, all the way to Smithstone pages and sewing on the inside, giving you an idea of the quality of this Bible. And again, they are printed and bound in the USA, very rare these days. And we also showed the four evidence of the four black ribbon markers, as well as here are the gold gilded page edges. Really beautiful. You can see how it pops across the light there on this Bible. It just gives it that finalized, elegant look here uh, on this beautiful Rock of Ages goatskin leather Bible. The final physical feature that we always like to show on any Bible is going to be its size and dimensions. We're seeing here with the ruler, the width is about six and a half inches, and then your height is gonna be about nine and one fourth inches tall, and then the thickness is about one and three fourths inch thick when you're measuring the full width there of the spine and the binding. And again, essentially, uh, the entire dimensions and footprint, especially when you consider that some of that uh, is from the overlap of the goatskin leather. This is actually a very manageable size Bible. It's kind of more of a medium size, and that is significant and impressive since it is a size 10 uh, large print font study Bible. So getting a large print study Bible with immense features, uh, you get a little bit more of the thickness, but that's a really nice footprint on this Bible. It's nice to be able to have all those features without having something that's too gigantic or bulky to carry around. As we get to the inside features of the KJV Rock of Ages Study Bible, Goat Skin Edition, we're seeing the presentation page here. And the presentation page is also accompanying a family record section, a place for holy matrimony, births, marriages, and then a place to record any deaths in the family there. Uh, the paper on this uh, is very thick and it's beautiful, quite erudite. Uh, it's actually basically more common in Oxford University Press KJV Bibles. Then the title page, the Rock of Ages Study Bible, the Bible and study notes you can trust, 7th edition, 2018, first printing, authorized King James Bible from Rock of Ages Press. The next unique feature is this Romans Road. It's a Romans Road to Salvation. Before anybody even gets to the biblical text, you can read this and learn how to accept Christ. There's also an extremely in-depth content section where most Bibles would just quickly list the 66 books of the Bible. Instead on these, uh, here in the Rock of Ages, you're getting not only Genesis and the pages where to find things, but then a breakdown of the subheadings, such as the days of creation or the Abrahamic covenant, and then Exodus down here, the Exodus from Egypt. Very thorough content section. Then we get to the introduction. The introduction of the Rock of Ages Study Bible is a very important section when you want to learn or need a refresher on how to use all the Rock of Ages study features. You're want, going to want to come back to this section. We'll take a closer look in a moment. It's a section on about the Bible and its author, how we got our English Bible, and a section on concerning the Old Testament. 
As mentioned, before we get to the biblical text and contents of the Rock of Ages Study Bible, it's first important to go over the introduction and see about the immense study features and how to use them. And we quickly read that the Rock of Ages Study Bible is a revision of the New Pilgrim Bible, as we previously talked about. The original Pilgrim Bible was originally released in 1948. It has a lot of features designed to aid your study and understanding of God's Word. And regarding the text, we know that that is the beautiful King James Version, which is the perfect choice of the Rock of Ages Study Bible and the only one we sell here at the KJV store. And then a brief note, which is true of all King James Version Bibles, that the italicized words were not found in the original languages. So basically that's just italicized words are used to make a complete sentence or complete thought. And that's going to be true of the text of this Bible as well as any King James Version Bible. We'll see that asterisks indicate the word or phrase is explained in a note and will be included in the subject index. We'll see some examples of asterisks next to words. We see that the in-text outlines, that that is talking about dividing the text of each book of the Bible into section headings. We'll take a look at Matthew later as a good example. And then the book introductions. Book introductions provide additional information to help the reader understand the background of that specific book of the Bible. On the next page of the introduction, we see that articles are going to cover large sections of the Bible and certain topics, and that study notes, immense study notes, lots of study notes, thousands of detailed study notes covering significant terms, they're going to appear both in text and at the bottom of the page. This is unique among study Bibles. Most only have one or the other, but you're getting a lot of the depth there of the Rock of Ages. And then you're going to see these maps and charts. There are 35 black and white in-text maps, as well as 32 in-text charts mingled and sprinkled in throughout the Bible text, so you don't only have to turn to the back of the Bible. Really cool feature we'll take a look at. There are dates used throughout the Bible, and we'll see that Bishop James Usher, the author of The Annals of the World, where he systematically calculated the date of the creation of the world, this is the same source of dates found in this Rock of Ages Bible and most well-known KJV study Bibles. And then we're going to see this subject index, an, an immense subject index, covers an index of topics, an excellent place to begin a study of a specific term or doctrine. So you don't always have to open the Bible right at Genesis and start reading. You can go to the subject index, maybe see a topic you'd like to know more about. Really good way to do that and study. And then also the concordance. It's a concise, they call it concise, but it's actually a very large 200-page concordance to the King James Version that helps you locate key verses of Scripture. After the introduction is the section on about the Bible and its author. I love this snippet on about the Bible and its author that says, And the hero of the book from beginning to end is the Lord Jesus Christ. The Old Testament writers kept saying, He is coming. The four gospel writers said, He has come. And the rest of the New Testament, there is the glad cry, He is coming. Almost every page of the Bible speaks of him. The Bible is the written word of God, but he is the living word of God. The whole book is about him, and we will be able to find him everywhere as we read. Next is how we got our English Bible. And I really love this section in the original manuscripts, which says that Bible believers hold to the fact that that the King James Bible is the preserved word of God, according to Psalm 12, 6-7. We have the pure words of God available today, just as those in the first century and earlier in Proverbs fifteen twenty six, and we can know what God has said by reading the KJV. Quick page turn. When you consider the manuscripts, it should be noted that the King James Bible is the only translation based on the Ben Shaim or Masoretic Hebrew text and the Textus Receptus or Received Text Greek text. All new translations are based on the critical text of Westcott and Hort in Greek and Ben Asher or Kittles critical Hebrew text. So the translation there is that if you want a quality study Bible that upholds the King James Bible as God's perfect word, then the Rock of Ages is an excellent choice, and we haven't even gotten to the inside features yet. After the very in-depth article on how we got our English Bible, we get to the introduction to the Old Testament. And this introduction is entitled, Concerning the Old Testament. 
It says the Old Testament, containing 39 books, is that portion of Scripture which came into the hands of men before the incarnation of the Son of God, our Lord Jesus Christ. It records the history of the human race and of the nation of Israel from their beginnings until about 425 B.C. So you're seeing most regular text Bibles or even just reference Bibles, they're going to very quickly get into the text of Genesis. Not so with this very in-depth Rock of Ages study Bible. You're getting a lot of background information. It's kind of setting up the story of the Bible so you can have a really good idea of what you're going to be reading and studying. And that's really nice to see. Then we get to the introduction of the book of Genesis. And we see that as a full page in length here on the right, very in-depth introduction to Genesis. The theme is that Genesis means beginning. The beginning of the world in Genesis 1.1 says it gives the beginning of what we call time. And the background is that Genesis begins with what we might call the parentheses of time. Genesis begins with creation and ends with a coffin in Egypt. It begins with glory and ends with a grave. As we flip the page and getting our first good overhead shot of the two-page layout and spread of the book of Genesis and the layout of this Rock of Ages study Bible. So we're seeing, we already read the introduction to the book of Genesis on the last page. Now we still haven't got to the text of Genesis yet before we get to the outline. That's in addition to that very in-depth introduction. We're seeing our example of an in-text note. We're seeing an example of bottom of the page notes. Here's another in-text note on the right, and then bottom of the page notes on, on the right and at the bottom as well. We'll take a look at the introduction and these other in-text features. Zooming in, this outline of Genesis really breaks down the entire book for you into seven different separate Roman numeral sections. The creation, or in the beginning, is Genesis 1, 1 through 2. You see the days of creation in Genesis 1, 3 through chapters 2, 25. And then man's fall into sin in Genesis 3, 1 through 7, etc. You're getting a breakdown of the entire book of Genesis here. As we skip down the page, we finally get to Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, and the actual biblical text. And we're seeing that the font size of this Bible, very large, easy to read. It is a size 10 font that's absolutely considered a large print in Bible publishing terms. Hard to get that large of a print in a study Bible with this many features and this many extra notes and things. You're seeing even this, this example of this in-text note on the firmament very bold, very easy to read with that always indicated by that gray background there. We're also starting to see these subheadings, uh, the sectional headings or subheadings. We see that the creation, it's, which is verses one through two, we see Roman number two is days of creation from the first day all the way to the creation of light uh, in Genesis 1, 3 through 2, 25, as we just saw in the outline above as well. And then we're seeing the second day or firmament here. So here in Genesis 1, so we see Genesis 1, 1, in the beginning, God, notice there's an asterisk next to the word God, created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. That S in Spirit is capitalized, we like that. Also, there is an asterisk there next to that word Spirit of God. So we know when we see an asterisk, that's going to refer to a bottom of the page note. So let's take a look at that bottom of the page note example of these two verses. We just read Genesis chapter 1 verses 1 and 2, and we know that there are bottom of the page notes, which we see here at the bottom of the page. So we see that asterisk next to the word God in Genesis 1.1 told us there is going to be a bottom of the page note, which we see here. It says that God, neither God the Father, God the Son, nor God the Holy Spirit had to be born or created. God was always. God always was God. And also we see here in 1.2, was without form and void. Some suggest that verse uh, 2 demonstrates a type of the lost person who is in darkness until the Spirit of God moves them to turn to the Lord Jesus. Man's life without God is a waste and void and full of darkness. Only Jesus Christ gives light in life. Then we also see two different instances here of Genesis 1-2, Spirit of God. This is the first occurrence of the Spirit, and He is moving. He moves through history, and many miss Him. And then also that the Spirit of God refers to the Holy Spirit, one of the three persons of the Godhead, each of a distinct 
personality, yet all one. See Trinity. When it says see Trinity, that's talking about in the subject index in the back of the Bible. It says the Holy Spirit began moving in this verse verse and has been moving ever since cf that means compare with matthew chapter 3 verse 16. now worth noting again on the actual verses up here at the top we only saw asterisk next to the word god and then spirit of god there was no asterisk next to the section was without form and void but it goes to show you that the asterisk essentially means that we are going to be able to find the terms god and spirit of god in the subject index at the back of the Bible, whereas without form was without form and void will not be in the subject index. That's just an extra bottom of the page note that you're getting here, but you're getting an idea um, of this entire page of Genesis. Uh, nearly two thirds of it are taken up by the outline and then also the bottom of the page notes. Then, if we look back up at this entire section of the scripture of Genesis, this middle part between these horizontal lines, we know that we're only seeing Genesis 1 verses 1 through 6, and then we're seeing the first example of the in-text note. We just showed the bottom of the page notes, but we see here on second day firmament, which is our subheading in verse 6, and God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And we know we see 1-6 firmament. Let's take a look at that note. So we see this in-text note on the firmament. We know that in-text notes are always going to have this gray background. And we see that the firmament, God made the firmament and divided the waters above and below it. God calls this heaven, and this is the atmosphere where the birds fly and clouds form. It is the first heaven. The second heaven is where the stars and planets make up the universe. When Paul, that's the Apostle Paul, spoke of the third heaven in 2 Corinthians 12, 2, he was not thinking of the spaces into which we gaze through telescopes, but of God's dwelling place that far surpasses our universe. It says to also see 1 Kings 8, 27. As we zoom back out and go to the overhead shot of Genesis chapter 1, we're seeing this full two-page spread again. Again, now you have a better idea of the layout of this Bible and the features of it. The outline of Genesis, the actual text of Genesis itself, we saw the asterisks and markings there in verses 1 and 2. You see the bottom of the page notes. You're seeing this in-text note on the firmament. Then we're also going to see, this is the first example of an in-text chart here on Genesis 1.19. This in-text chart on Genesis 1.19 very conveniently and cleverly outlines the days of creation. Day 1 is light. Day 2 is heaven above and water below. Day 3 earth and sea and vegetation. Day four, the creation of the sun, moon, and stars. Day five, living creatures of water and sky. Day six, living creatures on land and humans. And then day seven was the day of rest. So we've only gone over the first book of the Bible of Genesis and the first chapter of Genesis, and you're already seeing examples of how in-depth the Rock of Ages study features are, and that again, we see the in-text notes, there are 975 of those. We see thousands of bottom of the page notes, several examples of those. We're seeing an in-text chart. The only thing missing in, in this section, as well as the introduction and the outline of the book of the Bible, is going to be an example of the in-text maps, and we'll definitely take a look at some of those a little later on. A final good example of an in-text note brings us here to Romans chapter 1, and specifically verses numbers 16 and 17. Romans 1, 16 and 17 appear here at the top of the page. And the text of Romans 1, 16 and 17 says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Now we see this another example of an in-text note here on those verses. So what does the Rock of Ages study Bible mean by study notes you can trust? Well, I really like this here, verses 1, 16 through 17, salvation by faith. Salvation is in three tenses, past, Every believer has been saved from the guilt and penalty of sin. Present, every believer is being saved daily from the power of sin in his life. And future, 
every believer will be saved from even the presence of sin in his nature, so that in heaven he will be without sin and become more like the Lord Jesus Christ. In bestowing salvation on us, God uses the way of faith instead of the way of works. He offers his righteousness only to those who believe. Faith, in the cases of salvation and righteousness, is distrusting self and trusting another, in this case, God. It is believing that what he says is true before we see that it is. I love that verse. I love that uh, that in-text note. Absolutely, salvation by faith, not of works, lest any man should boast. And that is an excellent example of uh, this is a fundamental King James study Bible, and that those are definitely, in my opinion, study notes you can trust here in Romans chapter 1, 16, 17, and salvation by faith. Now we will quickly take a look at some of those in-text charts. There are 32 total. We flipped here to Psalm chapter 6, and we're going to see this technical words in the Psalms chart. Zooming in on 12 technical words of the Psalms, we get 12 examples there. The top meaning alamoth, which is this word means to set to maiden's voices. It probably referred to the maiden's choir. Psalm 81, a smaller chart example, shepherds in the Bible. On the shepherds in the Bible chart in Psalm 81, we see that sheep were fundamental to human existence in biblical times and that many Bible characters made their living as shepherds, such as Abel, Abraham, Isaac, Rachel, on down, Zipporah, Moses, David, Job, Amos, and the shepherds at Jesus' birth. Jumping forward to the New Testament, here in Matthew chapter 3, we're seeing two more in-text chart examples. On verse 3-7, the Pharisees and Sadducees, as well as Matthew 3-11, various forms of, of baptisms. And also, this is our first instance of an in-text map, that is Jesus' baptism and temptation on the right-hand page. So we see these two in-text charts right on top of each other, taking up the entire bottom two-thirds of the page of Matthew chapter 3. This chart tells us that the name Pharisee means separatist, and it's a sect or school of religious thought who believe that God's chosen people or Israel were supposed to be the distinct and separate from others. And then the Sadducees were members of the religious school opposed to the Pharisees. And the chart on various baptisms shows that in this verse, John the Baptist was contrasting his own visible act of baptism with that of the baptism of the Lord. And that this second baptism signifies two events, the baptism with the Holy Ghost and the baptism with fire. The baptism with the Holy Ghost came after Calvary on the day of Pentecost, and it comes on every believer when he is saved. Then in Matthew chapter 6, we're seeing this huge in-text chart on the Lord's Prayer. We're also seeing our first examples of the red letter text. And that's where Jesus Christ, of course, is speaking, indicated by that red text on the page. And we see on this Matthew 6, 9 chart, the Lord's Prayer, huge chart, taking up literally the bottom two-thirds of the page of Matthew chapter 6. And we know that verses 9 through, through 13 contain the well-known Lord's Prayer. This is interesting in parentheses, which really should be referred to as the disciples' prayer. It is obvious that this prayer is not the Lord's personal prayer because he would never ask for forgiveness of sins and he never sinned. So then it goes down and breaks down in great detail uh, why the Lord's prayer is important and, and that essentially it is an example to teach us how to pray. So this is another good example of the end text chart here in the Rock of Ages study Bible. One last good in-text chart example brings us here to Ephesians chapter 5, and specifically we see the chart at the bottom, chapter 5 verse 32 deals with the church. Let's take a look at that one. I really love this chart here on the church. This is the kind of thing that my dad would absolutely preach. It says, the word church or churches is found 114 times in the New Testament, and it has the idea of an assembly only 15 times does the word not refer to a specific body of people assembled in a specific location. It breaks it down further, and I really love this. Number one, local, the church of God, which is at Ephesus, or churches of Galatia, they're local, they're specific to a location. Visible, 
so they can be seen. An invisible church cannot assemble. They can't serve. They can't preach, baptize, fellowship, give, or evangelize. So they have to be local. They have to be visible. They also need to be organized, not in chaos, but in order, having officers, pastors, deacons, ordinances, baptism, and the Lord's Supper. Orders preach the gospel to every creature. It is Christ's church. He is the head. All should be done for him, and anything eternal is accomplished by him. So why do we say that this is a truly fundamental King James study Bible? Uh, that's some really good doctrine there and very specific on what the church is and is not. I love that that's talking about local New Testament churches. In addition to in-text charts in the Rock of Ages study Bible, we know there are also 35 in-text maps. That brings us here to Ezra chapter 3. Very good, very large map that we can see. The return from exile. So the beauty of this in-text map example is that when you're reading here in Ezra chapter 3 about all of the children of Israel gathering together and finally being back together in the cities, uh, they're gathered, they gather themselves together as one man to Jerusalem. We can see, you don't have to turn to the back of the Bible, you can see this map right here in the text, the bottom of the page, dealing with the return from exile for the children of Israel. Then in Daniel chapter 1, we see the in-text map on the Neo-Babylonian Empire, which was the, the layout and the naming of some of these places in the time of Daniel, such as Babylonia, Assyria, Damascus, and Jerusalem. Then Hosea chapter 14, we see the in-text map of Jerusalem during the time of the prophets. And this is kind of a more zoomed-in version here, showing the temple, the city of David, Hezekiah's wall, and the pool of Shalom. And one that we briefly touched on before is here in Matthew 3, where we saw those two charts on the left. We're seeing this map on Jesus' baptism and temptation on the right. Really neat map here on Jesus' baptism and temptation, seeing that Jesus kind of started his journey up here in Nazareth, kind of went south down towards Bethabara, over to Jerusalem and Jericho area, and then back up to Samaria. And really neat there to have right in the text. You don't have to turn to the back of the Bible. That's not the only place you can see these maps. Flipping ahead to Luke chapter 20. And this map on Jerusalem during the ministry of Jesus is almost more like a chart. It's very zoomed in, very clear and in-depth. We're seeing this is kind of the outer wall of the city of Jerusalem. And then specifically, here's Golgotha and the tomb of Jesus. And just a couple more in-text map examples. We're here in Acts chapter 13. And we see this map of Paul's first missionary journey and how the direction that he traveled through the Mediterranean Sea. Then in Acts chapter 27, and we see this map here in Acts 27 of Paul's journey to Rome. Now, this is no insignificant journey or trip or outline here. We see that he started all the way over here in Jerusalem and traveled a very, very, very great distance all the way through Malta. If you ever go to Malta, be sure to visit Paul's shipwreck church. Really cool to see. He did shipwreck on the island of Malta. And then all the way finally on up into Italy and Rome. And what an incredible journey, especially for Bible times. And again, you don't have to flip to the back of the Bible to see that. It's right here in the text for you near the end of Acts. In Acts 27, you can see Paul's incredible journey to Rome from Jerusalem. And the final in-text map example we'll show is here in Revelation chapter 2. And we see in Revelation chapter 2, this map, the seven churches of the Revelation. Lots going on here. Pretty unique map. We're seeing all those seven churches, starting from top to bottom, Pergamum, Thyatira, Sardis, Smyrna, Ephesus, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. And then also complementing that map is going to be this note down here on 212, Pergamos, which again, Pergamum, one of the churches, says, see Revelation chapter 3, verse 6 note on the seven churches. So you're in the middle of the text. There, It's very helpful study notes. It's study notes you can trust. These in-text maps is right here in the Bible, in the, in the actual biblical text. And then you're getting even more notes and references that's saying, here, here's everything you need to know about the seven churches of Revelation. That is very unique and very thorough here in the Rock of Ages study Bible.
and a couple of final examples of the text here in the KJV Rock of Ages Study Bible. We always like to show that this is a pure KJV text. This is absolutely a King James Study Bible for King James Bible believers. We already showed Genesis 1-2 where it said the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. That S in Spirit was capitalized. Well, we always like to show 2 Timothy chapter 3 and specifically verses 16 and 17 here on the right hand page. 2 Timothy 3, 16 through 17, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, throughly furnished unto all good works, T-H-R-O-U-G-H-L-Y, throughly. And finally, 1 John chapter 5 and verse 8, so 1 John 5, 7 and 8, for there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one, and verse 8, and there are three that bear witness in earth, the Spirit and the water, the rest of the verse says, and the blood, and these three agree in one. We like seeing that capital S in Spirit. We know that it is referring to that same Holy Ghost mentioned in verse number 7. That is deity. We absolutely believe it should be capitalized. And why do we go to such lengths to show uh, examples of this KJV text? It's because we believe that the accuracy of the King James text is important. The Rock of Ages Study Bible is absolutely a KJV supporting study Bible. We read in the beginning of the Bible features how that the King James Version is the correct one translated out of the correct Hebrew and Greek text. And so not only does the Rock of Ages just give a lip service to, hey, the KJV is the best and that's what we made this Bible in, but then it also uses a quality, pure KJV Cambridge trustworthy text in its contents. After the book of Revelation, we get to the back of the Bible features of the KJV Rock of Ages study Bible, indexes and maps. You're gonna see the subject index the New Oxford Bible Concordance, and the New Oxford Bible Maps. The subject index to the Rock of Ages Study Bible. This is a very important section and feature in the Rock of Ages Study Bible. The subject index is important because if you remember all those asterisk markings throughout the text, they're going to refer to the subject index. So you know you can even start your study here at the back of the Bible. So anything you want to know about Abraham, you can look him up. It gives all the verse examples of where you can read about him. Genesis 17.5 all the way down to James 2.21 or anything you want to know about an altar. How, does it, how is it made? What does it refer to? You see all the examples, 2 Chronicles all the way through 2 Kings. And that is a 32-page subject index in all. Excellent place to begin your study if you want to know about any particular topic or theme in Scripture. Then we get to the New Oxford Bible Concordance to the King James Bible. This is a very substantial and thorough concordance to have at the back of a study Bible. It is 200 pages in length. It shows the book, chapter, and verse location of the most prominent words in the KJV and supplies several words of the context in which each word is found. And finally, nine pages of full color Oxford Bible maps in total. So in addition to those 35 in-text maps that are black and white, sprinkled throughout the text of the Rock of Ages Study Bible, you also get these full color ones at the back for even greater in-depth study. So there you have it, KJV Rock of Ages Study Bible Goatskin Leather Edition, featuring this luxurious, soft, natural black goatskin leather cover on the outside, the genuine calfskin leather lining lie to the edge style on the inside, Smith or Smythe sewn pages for extreme flexibility, gold gilded page edges, four ribbon markers, medium trim size, very manageable, words of Christ in red, clear readable size 10 large print typeface, introductions and outlines to each book of the Bible, 975 in text notes, thousands of bottom of page study notes, 32 in-text charts, 35 in-text maps, asterisk markings indicating meanings and presence in the subject in-text of the back of the Bible, presentation page, family records section, tons of introductory features, including explanations on how to use the Rock of Ages study features, which we did go over at length, the subject index at the back, New Oxford Bible Concordance over 200 pages, New Oxford Bible maps, printed and bound in the USA, Pure, trustworthy KJV Cambridge text 
Really excellent Bible, the KJV Rock of Ages Study Bible, and now available in this goatskin leather edition, the finest quality edition that's ever been made in a Rock of Ages Bible. As such, we do hope that you enjoyed this video preview of the KJV Rock of Ages Study Bible in this gorgeous goatskin leather binding. From the KJV Store, the number one source for King James Version Bibles, where KJV is our middle name. Thanks for watching, and we look forward to sending you your next KJV Bible soon.